This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. Welcome to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. This is the final cast segment with your hosts, Brad Hicks and Josh Eldridge, where we cast our final opinions on all products, good and bad. Welcome to the final cast. All right, welcome back to the final cast on the Paddle and Fin Network. I'm your host, Josh. I'm Brad. And tonight, we have Bailey Hagbright and Brian the Killer Schiller. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Douglas Rods. Uh, Brian's been talking up his new setups. He's been super excited. He's caught very few fish, but that's not the rod's fault. That's Brian's. I haven't oh, caught few but... fish. I've caught a lot of fish, actually, as of recently. I was just kidding. <laughs> if we're talking like tournament scenario, touche, you win. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do bad in that tournament, that your first tournament, though. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, t- I took eighth in that one. I went into yeah. that blind. I think that's the thing. I need to just like not pre-fish and go into a lake blind. What well, I told you that last year, man. I know. I know. <laughs> Should have followed your advice, my friend. But no, he had to be like everybody else and get there on Tuesday, fish for four days, and then wonder why his spots don't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, I usually only put in two days. Only two days of work, man. Why well, I, I outfished my spots for the bracket tournament, dude. Like those fish were like, Yeah, we know what that is. Don't bite it. Don't bite it. <laughs> the thing that's flashing, don't bite that thing, dude. It hurts. Yeah, but dude, that's crazy. We gotta talk about that a second, because I don't think you guys talked about this yet, right? We did What's we up? did a pod about it. It's gonna get yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Ninety three inches didn't even get you top ten. And no. ninety three inches of smallmouth. Yeah. Dude, St. Clair is a mean, mean lady. Yeah, dude. It's unreal, dude. Yeah, the, top, the top 26 people had 90 and above. That's nuts. Do you guys That's know nuts. Zach Hall? Do you guys know the name at all? Uh-uh. I know that. I've heard the name. He fishes NYKBF, right? No, no. He's from Michigan. Okay. But he fishes St. Clair a bunch, and he's, he's caught... I think he said over 12 smallmouth this spring that were over 21 and a half inches. I believe it. I Ridiculous. believe it. A buddy of ours uh, was up there and he caught his personal best and it was 23 something and weighed 6.6 6 pounds. That, that's, that's it? That's, only that's six? Crazy. Oh my gosh. Who, who was that? I, I, I have to keep him nameless oh, so geez. I don't give away his spots. Secret. Secret society you're not a part of yet, Brat. <laughs> I think I knew who it is, but <laughs> dude, a guy caught a seven and a half pound smallmouth here in the Finger Lakes, and the thing was only twenty one and a quarter. That's nuts, dude. That had to have been just bloated. Bowling ball. It's yeah, ridiculous. dude. I, <laughs> I caught I caught some eighteens, dude, and my hand wouldn't even touch the top. Like if I spread my hand out, it wouldn't even touch the top of the fish. I was like, "Good lord, dude, these things!" And they're they're so funny because they're when they're they got shoulders like that. It's already a small mouth, and when you put shoulders on a small mouth like that, their mouth looks like a cart mouth at that point. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious man oh that's crazy <laughs> but let's get down to business uh we brought bailey and brian on we're going to talk about douglas rods um i've been kind of skimming through the uh website uh it's an awesome website actually it's really cool i like the uh the live video stuff that they're going on and i also noticed which i did not know that they make fly rods as well so we'll get into that some but welcome to the show Bailey, you've been uh, on Brian. I think you've been on the OG show with Brian before. Brian, you've been on the final cast several times. You're a regular, a regular guest. I've been on Bailey's you? Bailey's podcast too, man. Serious Angler. Can't yeah. forget that. Yeah, I was forced against my will to go on Brian's show. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him an alternative. Right. I said, "You either come on, or I'm going to sick Josh Smith on you." <laughs> he was like I, I, what time do i have to be there <laughs> sergeant mayhem yeah <laughs> but um so brian 
Yeah. You joined up with Douglas this year and Absolutely. you've been super excited. Um, I know that, you know, you've been talking about how great the rods are. So we'll kind of get start out with uh, Bailey first, though. And we're going to kind of have him talk about himself a little bit, how sure. long he's been fishing, what got him into kayak fishing, our usual gist. And uh, we'll get into some rod talk here. So, Bailey, go ahead, bud. Yeah, I'm um, Bailey Eichbrett. I'm the host of the Sears Angler podcast where I had a Brian and Brad, uh, Brad both on. So, Josh, I guess you're up next, dude. Sorry. Um, but I've uh, <laughs> been doing that for a while. I've been, I've been fishing since I was really young. Um, but my dad, pretty much my whole life started, you know, fishing with my dad on his uh, bay liner. That was just a boat that we'd go out casually with, a fam, like, with the whole fam. And uh, how I got into kayak fishing was he sold that boat. And basically I was mad because I loved the boat and I didn't <laughs> want to fish from shore. So we got like these Walmart, I think they were the, what do they call them? They weren't the Pelicans, but. The um, Viper? No, nah, I can't remember the name of it, but pretty much like your, your $100 kayaks, the ones that you could only go out in for like an hour before your back's going to break. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And Sun Dolphin. That's, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> that's, that's the one. Um, and basically started fishing from that. And uh, my dad and I came in one day after fishing. We're like, man, I am really sore. So he started looking into like, you know, some different kayaks and things. And he upgraded uh, his kayak. My brother upgraded his kayak. And they were just teasing me because I still had this Walmart Sun Dolphin. And uh, they kind of surprised me on my birthday. Got me a, it was a Field and Stream Shadow Caster. Oh, and that yeah. was my sophomore, junior year of high school. So I had that thing for four years. With that kayak, I could do so much more, you know, bring so much more rods out, storage and everything. And that got me into tournaments, and that got me going to getting a pedal drive and going down the whole rabbit hole. So it's kayak fishing has definitely been the passion. Um, and that's, that's pretty much about it. But it's been bass fishing my whole life, just been a maniac and all I think about. And now it's trying to work in the industry now, too. So it's pretty cool. Awesome, awesome. man. Oh, what kayak are you in now? So I'm in a Wildy Radar 135. Very cool. You like it? I like it now. I'm, it's definitely not one I'm going to stay in for a long time. I'm probably going to upgrade soon um, just because I want a little bit more leg room. But uh, she definitely does the trick now, putting a lot of miles on it. So it's it's been nice. It's definitely way better than the Shadowcaster. That thing was a barge. <laughs> I was, I was going to say that. My brother has one, man. I paddled it. I hated it. Oh, my God. <laughs> man. It was so slow. So yeah. slow. I'll, I'll give it that. You, you ain't falling off of that thing. But, yep. Sticking with the Wildy for now. Well, that Wildy's fast, man. It's a narrow, long boat. That thing's quick. Yeah. I went out. I was actually kind of surprised, like, how fast I was going and, how like, how much distance I could put in. And I'm young and limber for now, but I went out for six hours one day. I didn't bring the rods. Just decided to go put in time on the graph. And in six hours, I had 18 miles on the Cairo. So that was Jesus, wild. dude. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So it yeah. moves. It's definitely fast if you get going. I, I paddled four miles in my last tournament. I, I came home had to ice my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I have a torpedo now. That's funny. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, so so I've followed Bailey for a few months now, and dude, you are always putting up huge bags. So. You know, what do you attribute that to? Just time on the water. You've been doing this for a long time. So, you know, we always, we talk to people and, and a lot of times, unfortunately, in the fishing industry, you get like, you get into the hype, whether it's the new bait, the new rod, whatever, you know, the new kayak. But, you know, it's, um, you're kind of an example of what, you know, what really makes a good angler, in my opinion, and that it's, you know, you like you just mentioned, you went out for six straight hours, put in 18 miles on a kayak, just graphing alone, you know, putting down waypoints. And, you know, that is, th to me, that that's the number one thing that makes somebody a better angler. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, is there anything else that you might attribute to that? Or, you know, what, what do you what do you feel like is the keys to your success? Because, I mean, dude, every time you post, man, like every other day, I'm like, it's got 25 pound bag of smallmouth, like, <laughs> like on a regular I wish basis. I, had, man, I, 
I've never done 25 pounds of smallmouth. I've, I've done 22 or 23, but that's Lake Erie. And it's, yeah, 22, 23. Yeah. But it's like, uh, okay, you know, besides the point, besides the point. <laughs> Uh, there's a few things. I mean, I don't want to say I'm crazy successful because where I live, there's a lot of very, very talented anglers. Um, and that being said, I've been gracious enough to learn from a lot of them, um, where I've gotten the time to, you know, whether hop in their boat or, or whatever, and have the time to ask them questions. Um, I've been, I've been taken under the, uh, their wing by a few of them and, and learned how to, um, you know, break down water or whether it's, you know, even when it comes down to like just mindset, simple, like if you're, if you're stuck in a rut, how do you kind of get yourself out? How do you kind of differentiate, differentiate what you're doing versus the majority, right? Um, and even something like that can kind of help you key in on, on bigger caliber fish. Um, that also being said, New York and the Finger Lakes and the Great Lakes, we are blessed with very, very healthy fisheries. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty hard to not catch a big fish around where I live. Thankfully, I'm spoiled in that fact. Um, but I also definitely, I think the number one thing is getting time on the water um, and asking questions, um, the important questions, whether you do well or you skunk, of why did, you know, the why. I think why is the most important question. Like, if you have a really good day, try to think about why it was good, why certain patterns worked, uh, why that fish hit the way it did. Um, and wait, when you did bad, you know, what decisions did you make that went wrong? I think that's one thing I try to review each session after I get off the water, um, to try to see, you know, what went well, why it went well, what went wrong, why it went wrong, stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of just asking yourself different questions and forcing yourself to, you know, look at the small details that can kind of make a difference your next trip out. It's different stuff like that. Yeah. Now, do you, uh, think like, fishing from a bass boat helps with that as well since you can cover more water like you said also you're spending time with um you know higher level anglers so to say and then that way you can pick their brain and be like all right what are you seeing here you know like what you know what kind of pattern do you see developing or what kind of structure what is it that they see that you might see differently and you know kind of keys you into that so I think yes and no when it comes to the boat. Yes, because covering water can definitely be beneficial. Uh, but I think in the same aspect, covering water can kind of be bad. I mean, if you find an area where there's fish, if you have a boat, you can be kind of quick to leave if they're not biting. Whereas that kayak forces you to pick them apart and figure them out, right? So yeah. with a boat, you can pick up and you can run 15 miles and go find active fish. But I mean, you don't learn as much as if you st stuck around and trying to figure out what's going on in that situation. Um, so that and, you know, asking different questions of, you know, as much as some people don't like it, electronics are huge now. And learning how to read that electronics, how to use your electronics to be able to help you find fish. And I've gotten it recently where people see me out in the kayak and I have an HDS9, so it makes my kayak kind of look tiny with that big screen. And guys will say, like, isn't that kind of cheating or whatever? And, you know, I just, I like to laugh at that comment because it's diff it's the difference between a 10 fish day and a 40, 50 fish day. You know, it's, it's something like that. But um, electronics are huge, especially if you're going to fish offshore. Um, but just learning how to, like I said, ask the right questions and just trying to understand the different concepts when it involves uh, fish behavior. I think that's one thing I, I think I research the most. Um, it's just trying to find articles and different things of how fish behave. I think yeah. that, can, that can help you key in on certain things, which is pretty cool. Like, uh, I, I learned something cool the other day where it's, if you add, like, highlighter right below your treble hooks, uh, especially for smallmouth, you get a way better hookup ratio um, than just a crankbait with a flat white belly because it gives them an area to target and pinpoint. Huh. And I did it, and it works. So, <laughs> All right, this is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, interesting. You're painting bullseyes on your baits for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, every almost every crankbait right now, besides like maybe like your your fire cross, has like a little yellow highlighter mark right under my treble hooks. It's <laughs> a great yeah, idea. I, it is yeah. a good idea. I might try that. Something different. So it's yeah. Cool. So Brian, Josh. <laughs> how's it going over there buddy it's going man it's going good all right so let's talk about what rods that you got 
through Douglas. Oh, and, man. Uh, yeah. I gotta pull out my catalog because I had. <laughs> just so I know. Just so I know. Um, well, so you touched on it uh, briefly before, and I just wanted to bring it up that Douglas makes fly rods, and they actually started out as a fly rod company. And they've won many awards for their fly rods. Um, so that's uh, just something I wanted to throw out there. But, um, you know, in the spinning and casting series, they um, they have two different two different series. It's the LRS and the X Matrix. Um, Bailey could probably give you the breakdown of, like, the big difference in the blanks better than I could. Um, but I guess LRS series is um, a little bit more budget friendly. Um, you know, price wise, you know, you're looking at that like uh, 180 to 240, 250 range. Um, whereas the X matrix is a little bit higher up. Um, but in the LRS, uh, I did get uh, one casting rod, and I believe that was the uh, 724F. So, like, uh, you know, I'm sure you'll hear me and Bailey talk about, like, these numbers. So, like, the first two numbers, 72, that's the length of the rod. The 4 is um, the stiffness of the rod. Um you know, four is kind of like a medium heavy, five is a little bit more heavy, and then the F on the end uh, stands for uh, fast tip, fast action. Yeah. Um, so I did get uh, one LRS casting rod, one LRS spinning rod, and then all the rest of my rods are X Matrix. Um, you know, right now, like the top three rods that I've been using the most is. Um, the 715F, the 724F, and the casting, and then in the spinning, it's been the uh, 6103XF. Uh, so that's an extra fast tip. I've been using that a lot for both drop shot and net rigging. Um, it's a 6 foot 10 rod, uh, medium, um, medium power, extra fast tip. Um, but dude, I mean, the quality, like I I've talked about it before is like, my big thing was, is, um, so back in, I don't even know when it was probably March or something. I took a trip over to Michigan, uh, to visit, um, a tackle shop that carried these rods. And I just wanted to put them in my hand, see what they felt like. Um, and actually, you know, put my eyes on them and see what they were all about. And I was really impressed. Um, my big thing is like, I've always been a cork grip guy and, um, they do have a couple models that have cork grips, but most of them are like this high grade EVA foam. And my past experiences was like some EVA foam. It's almost like too soft, like it's spongy, you know? And I feel like you lose some sensitivity out of the rod. Um, and this their foam um it's it uh foam. Yeah. yeah it's not even like foam it's hard to d describe what it is um but it's a a fuji fuji grip correct so I it's so now so it's the eva grips um it's just like a premium eva yeah uh, it's, okay. it's it's not like your discount eva where it's just gonna like you could rip off you know right right it. It's it's stiff and, and like soft enough to the point where it's 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 just extremely comfortable. It right. literally molds to your hand. Um, but no, the the Fuji that's it, made with Fuji components, so like yeah. the the guides and, and whatnot. So making it also corrosion resistant, so you can take it yeah. to salt water. So like yeah. I'm headed to Florida in two weeks. I'll be taking Douglas rods with me. So it, it, the components are just they're, they're built for premium. That's basically yeah. what that. Sorry, carry yeah. on. I interrupted you. Yeah, no, 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 and they use those uh, the Fuji tangle free tips, man, which are nice. Like most rod tips have like two bars that come down off that guide yeah. to yeah. like the shaft of the rod, and usually it like sticks out. So like if you get a little bit of line wrap or something like that, like your line always gets caught on that, 
and the way that Fuji made that tip, um, it's virtually tangle free because it doesn't have that extra metal like protruding out off of it. Um, and that was like super sexy to me. Um, but I mean, all around, man, the performance of them are, is just been incredible. And not only that, but like, you want to talk about lightweight? I mean, like, a lot of those X matrix that I'm running are like 3.8 to like 4.2 ounces. Like that's extremely light. Um, but, uh, not only that, man, like just, just the people at the company in itself, like everybody I've dealt with and talked to just extremely nice people down to earth and, uh, you know, always picking up the phone and, just wanting to work with people and keep growing the sport of fishing, man. So, heck yeah. And Bailey, do you care to touch on, like uh, Brian had previously mentioned, the uh, difference in the blanks between the X Matrix and LRS series? Yeah. So, basically, the biggest difference is the X Matrix is a higher tonnage of a of blank of graphite. Um, they do have some blank <laughs> rods with some fiberglass, which is pretty nice, especially if you're going to be throwing stuff with treble hooks. Um, I know some people like to throw chatterbaits on blended rods too. Um, so those are, that's pretty sweet, but it's basically a difference in the tonnage. Um, that being said, the X matrix is made of a little bit more components, making them a little bit stiffer. So what I like to do personally is when I, any, anytime I'm throwing, um, any baits with treble hooks on it, I throw an LRS because yeah. it's a lot softer because it's made with less components. So, uh, basically anything that doesn't have a treble hook on it. I'm going to be throwing the X Matrix series because it's just going to be um, a little bit more. Um, yeah, it's going to have a lot more torque on it. It's going to have uh, that components that make it a lot more sensitive than the LRS. Now it's not a huge difference, and you know, when you look, especially when you look at weight, they're very similar. It's just that higher tonnage of a graphite, a little bit more components that make it a little bit uh, more sensitive. Excuse me, my voice cracked. I'm 22. Let me give me a break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice till you said it. I didn't either. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it, <laughs> uh, a little bit more material makes it a little bit more sensitive than the LRS. So it's basically so, the biggest difference. Yeah, I mean that LRS casting rod that I got. Uh, I've been throwing jerk baits and crank baits and stuff like that on it, and it's it's wicked, man. Compared to what I used to use. Um, there's just such a world of difference in sensitivity and quality. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the models are very technique specific yeah. where it can apply to one to, you know, like one to three different applications and you can definitely get really creative with it. Um, but they're very technique specific. So, you know, like if you have, you know, we can talk on, uh, Brian, you can attest to a few of them. There's a few models like the seven, one, five, uh, and the 724F and spinning that are very versatile. But you take like a 610 3XF, that is a bread and butter drop shot rod. You could throw net rigs on it. But really, I mean, you, you don't throw much else on it because it's so honed in on those two applications. So it's very technique specific, but obviously you can get creative with certain models. Yeah, man. I know, like, because um, I, I had a conversation with Bailey when I was ordering up rods and. Um, I think you had suggested that LRS model for uh, that spinning rod for Ned rigging. And then I think one day I was just like, ah, it's back there. I already got something tied on. I'm just going to retie on this uh, 610XF. And uh, I was like, yeah, this is like the bee's knees right here. And I ended up sticking a bunch of smallmouth on, uh, mm -hmm. on table rock with it, dude. And I was just like, all right. Well, and it, but that's that's totally true, man. Like, um, I've kind of broken down a couple different baits that I'll use, uh, like on that seven two four. Like, I'll throw a chatter bait. I'll throw um, I'll throw the um, like a Kitex swim bait on it or an underspin. Mm -hmm. um, just anything with like a little bit more weight and a little bit movement, and then. Uh, you know, just and on that 610 as well, I've not only thrown a Ned Rig, but I've also drop shot and caught fish. And, uh, you know, you can go back and forth with those two. But that's the thing, too. Like, when I first uh, started looking at Douglas, like, 
you know, like Bailey mentioned, like very technique specific, like they do a whole layout, um, you know, on their catalog, which is online as well. And it'll suggest like, you know, this rod is good for, you know, um, finesse worms or swim baits. Uh, this is a good jig rod. This rod's good for punching or umbrella rig or whatever, you know, and they'll break it down and give you the different options and you can kind of see where those things overlap on that graph which is is sweet man because i think um you know a lot of people that aren't maybe as heavy into fishing as some of us like you always get that question well what rod would you throw this on like i hear um you know ryan milford and the guys on the bass fishing for noob segment always ask their guests like okay what rod and reel setup would you throw when you're doing uh you know drop shot or you know chatterbait or whatever and it's interesting to see uh what different people use as far as like reel and line and rod um but um you know douglas kind of makes that easy for you to figure out just by looking at that those charts Mm -hmm. yeah and you tend to see that with you know the higher end rod makers at this point like you know, I've been throwing Fenwicks forever, and that was one thing that was super frustrating is sitting there trying to, you know, distinguish what rod setup would, you know, benefit throwing jigs versus this. And you've always got the general, like, the general, like, outline from just listening to other anglers. But, you know, as I'm looking through the site, it's awesome. I'm picking just random rods, and it lists out that it you know some of these are like a good all-purpose round rod and that but it you know here's some bait you know rigging methods that you know it shines with you know and that's right. pretty cool it kind of takes out the the guesswork behind that and um you know i've been i'm in here trying to find this uh glass rod which one is it the lrs series has more glass in it does it yeah so that's like what you would want to use for like jerk baits, crank baits, things like that. I mean, you could use it for, you know, they have a good rod in there that would work great for like a chatter bait, um, shaky head, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, like, like Bailey said that when you move up into the X matrix series, which is like for the serious angler, man, you know, like the guys that are going out grinding in tournaments and stuff like that. Or if you just want, like I like to call it the babushka, man, you know, it's like you want to move up to that X matrix and and have just a fine quality rod that you can, you know, at any time you pull that out. You know, it's like you want the six shooter or you want the, the you know polished you know 45 with the 16 plus one clip you know what i mean <laughs> not not to compare guns to fishing rods but but you, you know what i did. mean i did i did <laughs> so i mean uh, you know it's it's one of those things man um you know they do uh two uh i don't want to forget to mention it is they make um like float and trout rods for yes. you know trout fishermen and stuff mm-hmm. like that like you know, obviously, like we talked about at the beginning, like, you know, Douglas was a fly fly rod company before anything. So, like, they're really heavy, deep-rooted in that trout community. And, uh, you know, so they couldn't leave those out for sure. And I know when I went over to that shop in Michigan, they had a lot of those rods because they have a lot of heavy, you know, steelhead runs and salmon runs and stuff out of the Great Lakes. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah. That's and you're talking a big company yeah. that, that, that Douglas is with, and they're taking the conventional side by storm. I mean, the the conventional only started probably like four two or five years, years ago, ago. Right? okay? Yeah, it's not, it's not in recent, so and it's oh. it's blowing up pretty pretty well. And I don't know if it, how well you guys keep up with like the Bassmaster MLF or anything like that. Like Garrett Paquette, who killed it today on Ufala, he's he's a Douglas guy. Um, and one thing he can attest to, going back to the LRS and X Matrix, is both of them have their place. He throws both. It's just right. depending on what model and of which series helps you with that specific technique, which is yeah. it's pretty interesting. But yeah, so Douglas started. It's originated in New York, Central New York. It started out as a fly rod company because they had a very heavy uh, presence on the Salmon River, Lake Ontario, 
what's called the the DSR or the you know the Douglaston Salmon River. Um, so basically, what they did is they decided to start this rod company, and the family, the the Barclay family, had this, had this big um, contribution in helping restore the fishery for the Salmon River and Lake Ontario. So what they did is, um, with that passion, they decided to make these um, fly rods and named the company uh, Douglas after their son and um, David Barclay, the owner's father. So that's basically where they created that, got these fly rods in, designed a bunch of this stuff, and got the, the right people to help with the right aspects of it. Uh, and then a f- few years down the road, they're like, let's broaden this, let's, let's go conventional. And they've been doing it, like, like Ryan said, they're very successful on the fly side. And, and just it's the only thing stopping the, the conventional side from doing the same is just brand recognition. You know, we, yeah. we've had many big names that um, would stop by our booth at the Classic that, you know, they said if once we get bigger and, we, and Douglas gets a little bit more money on their side to, you know, be able to support these big name athletes and anglers, Douglas is going to blow up because it's the product is there. It's just it's a lot of times when you bring up Douglas in a conversation, people are like, oh, like it's a, you know, some fly rods, really good fly rods. Mm-hmm. But they don't know yet that the conventional rods are there. So right. it's, yeah. It's cool to be in the roots of it, to see, you know, and watch it and be a part of it growing. So we're, we're getting there day by day. It's it's funny because the first time I heard about Douglas was from DeRozier being on uh, Brian's show, probably beginning of this year, I think. Yep, yep. And then I came, I met Bailey here, and he was talking about Douglas Rods. I'm like, that sounds really familiar. I can't remember yeah. why. And it was DeRozier talking about his uh, fly rods. Yeah, JD crushes it down south with them fly rods, man. Yeah, yeah they, they look like, sweet yeah. too. I I've seen pictures of his rods and stuff on Instagram. They look they look they're beautiful rods. Yeah, yeah I, the spinning casting, all of it looks really nice. Yeah, yeah JD does a lot of good for uh, you know product uh, photos and different stuff like that, and getting information out there. You know, he's the man. So. He's a good photographer too. <laughs> yeah, it's shout out cool. to JD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he's listening to some good old reggae right now. <laughs> oh, he's always listening to reggae, man. Dude, my inbox is full of like reggae suggestions from him. I love it. I love it. Brian, are you a reggae guy? I listen to reggae, man. Hell yeah. I'll get down on some reggae. Right. Rasta, man. I'll tell you guys a funny story real quick. So uh, <laughs> Sam Jones, was it Sam that was up here? I think it was Sam that was up here. We went to launch on my lake. Uh, the one night, yes, it was Sam and Justin Staley this past weekend. We go to the ramp, we go to launch, and there's these two chicks on the dock. One's probably, you know, mine and Josh's age. The other one older, maybe 60s, 70s. And uh, they're bluegill fishing. They got reggae blasting. <laughs> the older lady catches a bluegill, and she's like, how do I unhook this? And... Uh, the chick that was our age was like, this is my mom. She's from Jamaica. She was straight up from Jamaica. And uh, I was like, you guys got the good tunes playing over here. And she's like, yeah, man. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, dude. Now we're going to go blast some bass. I got the yeah, man from the Jamaican lady. That's awesome. So it was awesome. Sorry. Side side story. Side story. Uh I thought you were going to say something completely different. No, no, no. <laughs> Be like, they got on the boat, man, and it just started blazing down. And no. Was no. Like, hey. <laughs> no. Like, no. Oh, man. But so, Bailey, with you guys, like, you know, like a lot of the rod companies, you know, they just kind of tend to, not tend to, but you often see like an, and aim towards big bass, you know, big bass boat anglers. And it's kind of cool seeing that you guys are bringing people like Brian and from the kayak community on board to, you know, represent the company. Um, is that done intentionally or was it just by accident? And you guys kind of just started to, you know, since you're, you're, you kind of on both sides, you know, you, you fish from a boat often as well as your kayak. Yeah, so the way I looked at it was, and I know there's so many differing opinions on this, but for me, there really isn't a rod. You know, there's the argument of saying of certain rods that are 
you know, too short or too long for the kayak. And for me, I don't, I don't feel that because I throw eight inch or not eight inch, eight foot long swim bait rods out of my kayak and I have no problem. Um, so for me, it wasn't a matter of, cause they asked, you know, should we be making these rods that are designed for the kayak angler? And for me, I was like, if you, you know, who, who's going to be buying these rods? They're going to be a competitive, they're going to be dedicated. They're going to be a passionate angler. They're not going to, there's no way somebody who's the average Joe who doesn't fish that much is going to drop $300 on, a, on one rod. Right? So the way I looked at it is these guys are going to be very technique specific. They're not going to know what they're doing. Um, don't change anything about the rods. Just try to gear your marketing towards the kayak community. Um, so that's one way I told them is, is you just kind of find these outlets within the kayak community and that's a way to kind of get your, your brand name out there. Um, and, and Brian was the, the silver bullet for us because he was a mix of both. A talented angler and obviously you guys have this big platform paddle and fin. So that's when Brian and I discussed it for probably what almost two months before it kind of came to. Yeah, I don't know, something like that. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. We went back and forth. COVID hit, and uh, and then yeah, uh, started talking to Kevin Johnson over there, and um, yeah, but we went back and forth for a few months chatting about yeah. it. Yeah. So basically, that that happened. That kind of has helped more people. In the, that I've noticed in the kayak community, learn about Douglas, and I've gotten Douglas paired up with NYKBF, their official sponsor of yeah. NYKBF, and uh, just recently they had uh, one of the for big bass that tournament, you win a free LRS rod. Yeah. So, I saw uh, that the name out there, and I've I've been getting messages from people through NYKBF asking questions, and they want to get outfitted in, in Douglas rods, and so it's it's definitely helping. It's definitely not creating uh, a quote unquote kayak rod. It's just yeah. It's just a way of you know changing Spreading your marketing avenues to appeal yeah. to a certain community, so that's basically what we kind of did there, and it's it's been working out so far. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, that, I've gotten that too. Like uh, the other day, I had uh, a Douglas post on my story, and somebody messaged me, and they were like, "What's Douglas?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, "Douglas fishing rods. Check them out, man." Yeah. And uh, it was actually uh, my good friend David Brook. And uh, he was like, oh, I never heard of him. And I was like, dude, and we started talking about him a little bit. So um, that's the thing, man, like Bailey's talking about. Like it's, uh, you know, you go talk to a bunch of trout junkies and you met, you know, mention Douglas. They'll probably know who they are. Um, I think they're just growing in the bass world and growing rapidly. And, you know, part of that is is the kayak fishing you know especially with the way you know take coronavirus out of the picture you know the way our sport and our tournament series have been growing rapidly you know you got bass you got hobie you got kbf and then you got all the you know feeder uh grassroots leagues in all these different states man and um you know it's it's adding that competitive edge back into fishing for the average Joe mm -hmm. and you know, for the guys that are saving their money by not buying an 80,000 to a hundred thousand dollar bass boat and get into a kayak, you know, you, you go through and you go to a KBF event, a Hobie event or a bass event and you go, you go and look at each guy's boat. I mean, they're decked out in the nines dude with their rods, yeah. their reels, their, their baits, you know, um, whereas other guys that are struggling to make that boat payment can't afford a mega bass jerk bait. So they're throwing like KVDs, you know what I mean? So it's, it's just one of those things, man. I think it's a great opportunity, um, for Douglas to definitely grow in the kayak community. You know what I mean? Cause you talk to a lot of these guys. I mean, you guys have all heard it on the podcast, like, and I'm, I know Bailey on his too, man. Like, you know, these guys are rolling with, like, you know, high-end St. Croix or whatever, yeah. you know. I mean, we don't like those guys. We're Douglas <laughs> guys. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it, 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 yeah, it's yeah. it's one of those things, you know. It's like, um, you know, the more we can get the word out, the better. Um, that's just like anything, man. And um, it's just, I mean... I, I remember Bailey when him and I started talking and I made that trip out to out to Michigan. He's like, "You just have to put one in your hand to understand." 
And when I did that, like, it all made sense. It was like an epiphany. It was like a <laughs> little light bulb went off. <laughs> yeah, you I know? Just, there's there's so many different sales pitches out there where it's just like everyone's got their pitch and everyone's got their way of telling you how great their product is. And, you know, majority of the time, it is a great product. Everyone makes a great product now. But the only yeah. way to kind of differentiate between the two is just literally you just have to just put it in your hand and feel it for yourself. I mean, that's the only way you can really right. sell anything in fishing to somebody, to a market that you're going after, somebody who's passionate and dedicated, obviously who wants to put their homework in before they spend $300. You know, you right. need to put it in your hand first. You can't cold call anybody in fishing and sell them. I mean, props to you if you can cold call and sell a $350 rod. I mean, that's just... Yeah, right, right. Uh, well, it's just a yeah. matter of literally seeing it for yourself. And then you no. see the difference. So it's, totally yeah. agree, man. Um, just a prime example. I think it was uh, it was either Sam Jones or or Jay Randall was up here this weekend. They were both up here this weekend, um, and I remember they picked up an X Matrix and they were like, "I get it. This thing is <laughs> light. Like so, dude, that sounds like, like Jay. This is light. Yeah, it might have been. <laughs> it might have been Sam too. I don't know, but." You know, they were they were blown away by how light that rod is, man. And I, I know that was one of the things that I noticed right away when I, you know, put a rod in my hand is just I mean, it's like nothing. Yeah. It makes me want to upgrade all my reels to like some super light reels, you know, because like I'm just my reels aren't the greatest. But they yeah. work. You know. Yeah. 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 But um Brad, you got any questions, bud? No, I, I'm not. Out. I'm not real. Yeah, I'm not real familiar with Douglas, but yeah. like like Brian said, well, that's I how will, you get familiar. You ask questions, I bro. I, I, <laughs> no, no. Apparently, you got to hold the thing. To get familiar you got to hold it. the thing. <laughs> and that that's what I'm gonna do. I want I want to try it out. Yeah, man. So we just have to drive to see Brian. Let's go, I'll, dude. Hold it, like, Let, Brad. How far are you from Fish USA in Erie, PA? Uh, four hours, probably. Oh, never mind. I thought I don't know. I, I keep thinking you're in like northeast Ohio. Not yeah. or I southwest. wish I was. Yeah. I'm in the crappy part near Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> Cincinnati. I'll see what uh what dealers we have near you. I, I just Richmond. looked the, the closest ones Erie or uh, Ri uh Richmond, Kentucky. Richmond, Kentucky. I think that's near Lexington or something, maybe. Or uh, straight south this, from you. Yeah. We'll just make Brian drive down here this weekend. Yeah, let's go. I, I'm cool with going to Illinois. I've never been out there. Yeah, I got to work this weekend. This weekend's not good. Come Ooh. the following week. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> sometime, sometime soon, let's make it We happen. could go raid yeah. Rocktown. You guys going to do the, uh, the Lake Erie tournament out of Ohio for KBF? Yeah. East West I'll, I'll finish. I'll yeah. finish less. Oh, maybe. I might do that one. I can I can bring some extra rods. You can try them out, use them for the for the weekend. That'd be sweet. Yeah, that's yeah. mid July, go. right? I believe it's July twenty fifth, twenty sixth, something like yeah. that. Yeah, that's one of the tournaments I wanted to hit this year. Uh, Ooh, the I, I heard there's four. I'll be on the road. I hear there's a lot of grass up there. I like fishing grass. It's oh, definitely the, the one that's on my radar right now. Yeah. I want to if you're this. going, then I gotta go. Yeah, you do have to I go. just want to go back to St. Clair like, <laughs> forever. I think everybody does. <laughs> this is just so fun. Oh, man. Like, every time I got off the water, I was like, like smiling from ear to ear. Like, I don't even know what happened, but it was awesome. <laughs> nice. So, let's go, Bailey. How long have you been with Douglas so far? What is it? Seven months now? Seven months? I've been rocking a Douglas for two years. I actually, funny story, I the way I actually learned about Douglas is I got tagged in a giveaway on Instagram to win a rod, and I entered that, realized Douglas is in Syracuse, local here in New York, and I entered and won the giveaway. So that's how I got my first Douglas rod, was winning a giveaway. So That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. Now he like works for him. <laughs> I was about to say you should talk about that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So 
So in December, I got home from an internship at the University of Notre Dame and basically decided I wanted to work in fishing. Um, and pretty much long story short, got in touch with Douglas. Uh, we quickly decided to come to an agreement that it was a good fit and I decided to do conventional sales for them uh, as well as social media and event coordination. Um, and that was going great until obviously COVID hit and obviously people got laid off and whatnot. Um, so things are slowly starting getting back, but now they've brought me back on as in the recent month uh, as the Northeast Territory rep. So still have an affiliation with them, still uh, rolling with them. They, they sponsored the podcast, which is awesome. And uh, going from there as thus far. So are you traveling for that? Yeah, basically. So basically what happens in the Northeast, I have a select number of states that I'm quote unquote like in charge of. So I, I keep uh, in contact with them, uh, you know, retain that relationship, uh, stop in when they need orders and drop ships. I'm the, the middleman getting that to, from them to Douglas and, uh, you know, visiting shop and, you know, obviously showing face and talking with them, talking about, you know, different rod specs and, you know, different you know, information that they can use. So when people come in and ask about them, they don't need to call us up and ask. So yeah. they can get, they can learn a little bit more because if they know a little bit more about them, they're more inclined when somebody asks a question to then push it out the store. So, yeah. 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 I'm jealous, man. I, I want to do something like that. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a fun gig. Uh, I'm still obviously looking for the full time job. Uh, yeah. it's, Cause it's just that, you know, you can't rely on that sort of income, but it's definitely fun. If the, uh, the motivations there. So. Yeah, still pretty cool though. It is cool. <clears throat> now, I mean, are I'm you... jealous, man. He, the kid's 22 and he's already in the got his foot in the door in the industry, and that's not easy to do. Yeah, nope. you got to be smart and go to college, Brian. Oh, that's where I failed. <laughs> <laughs> you notice he said University of Notre Dame, not like oh, Notre, Dame, right. Notre yeah. Dame High School. <laughs> well, I, I didn't go to school there. I went to school at a local university here for four, for four years, got my master's, and completed. <laughs> Nobody needs to know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just sounded like you went really? when you said it. I was like, he went to Notre Dame. <laughs> That's badass. Notre Dame. I went to Sinclair Community College. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me too. <laughs> but um, so, what is your favorite rod so far that you've been using? Oh boy. It, it, like when you pick up this rod, you're like, I'm catching a giant smallie. <laughs> you know, oh, or like. Giants. It's, it has to be a chatterbait rod, the one you were talking about before we went on air. No, that's just that's just a bait I've been using a lot lately that I like. But, um, oh, man, when it comes to the rods, like, it literally depends on the day because I get so excited about throwing one or the other. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just picked up a, a 764 MF. I'll be throwing some 6XD, some deep dive response post spawn to hit those outside grass lines. I'm super excited about that. But at the same time, I look at this 745 that I put to work on Champlain, and that was throwing a frog. That one was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. It just really, I don't know. If I had to pick a favorite, I'd probably pick the, the 744F, which I did not bring up here with me, just because I love throwing jigs so much. And that, that's a yeah. great football jig, flipping that's, jig. God. That's the babushka, man. <laughs> that is the babushka. I honestly thought you were going to say the bee's knees again. No, that's <laughs> the babushka, man. The jig rod. Me and Bailey are the same, dude. We love throwing jigs. And, and that was the thing. Like We got into an extensive conversation about, are you sure this is the right jig rod? And Bailey just said, trust me. And I remember the first time I threw a jig with it, I was like, I'm glad I trusted that kid. <laughs> it's also, it's a really good, uh, if you throw like three quarter to ounce and a quarter ounce chatterbaits, that's a great yeah. for it too. Yeah. Hey, that's a big chatterbait. Yeah, it's for Randall was like throwing. Yeah. 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 Jay Randall was throwing one this past weekend looking for pike. Was he really? Oh, dude, he was swinging for the fences. Were you like, I told oh, I told him, dude. I was like, I already caught like six, and all six of mine were bigger than his, and I caught mine all on a shaky head. 
Dude, every time you guys fish together, it seems like you catch everything and he doesn't catch anything. Uh, that's Jay. That's Jay. <laughs> he caught a bunch of fish. He caught a bunch of fish. Well, that's because Jay's like me, and he's like, he'll refuse to use what's working, and yeah. he's like, it's going to happen. I'm going to get the 40 with this one. And then all of a sudden, it's like, chomp, there goes your bait. <laughs> the 40 <laughs> just took it, bro. <laughs> I think the key is you got to throw baits that are $20 or more to catch those pike. Oh, they don't like the that's cheap. <laughs> I hate fishing pike lakes with jackhammers tied on. That's just, uh, it's nerve-wracking. Uh, yeah. I've only ever caught two pike fish in the river here in Ohio. Cause, I mean, they're they're like rare to catch. One of them was on a like little three inch swim bait on a eighth inch ball head jig or something. Yeah. And then and then the other one was on a whopper plover. <laughs> I uh, New York. We have so many of them here in New York to the point where I literally cannot stand pike anymore. Yeah. yeah. I get mad way. when I catch them. It's just bad. <laughs> and Josh the Smith way. said the same thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I don't know what it is, but like when I catch big pike, as hardly I won't even touch them. I'll just use the pliers to get the hook out, and somehow I still bleed fr- from the teeth as hard as I try. Well, yeah. that's the thing too is they got something uh, uh, in their slime or uh, mouth or something. Like when they cut you, um, it's an anticoagulant, so like yeah. your blood won't clot. That's why you bleed so much. Huh. Yeah, it'll be like a little nick too, and you're like, oh, yeah. "What did, did, did I just lose my finger?" Like, "Oh my god, no, yeah. dude, it's just a little pinprick." Yeah. But uh, I remember I first my first jackhammer fish was a tiny pike, dude, uh, up near Lake Erie on a marsh, and I was like, "Of all things to catch, man, it just had to be this." It's like Jay Randall was sitting in the back of my kayak just <laughs> laughing his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I caught it, and as soon as I start reeling in, I'm like, that's not a bass. And then I saw it flash, and I'm like, I'm just waiting for that jackhammer to go swimming away in that pike's mouth. Yeah. But luckily, yeah. I got him landed and got him out. And I did the old uh, Jay Randall shake the snot rocket off, you know, with your pliers. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> got to do that. Got to do that, man. Well, Bailey, I think we'll wrap it up, man. I appreciate you coming on the uh, the pod and talking to me and Brad and Brian. Thank you for joining as well. Yeah. Anybody have anything else? Me. Anything else you want to talk about, Brian? Brad? Bailey? Nope. Did you guys? I got three B's, bro. Three B's here. Yeah. Just uh, uh, see you guys in July at Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I want to come out there. That'd be now fun. you got to do it. Now you're forced against your will. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just uh check out the rods at douglasoutdoors.com yes sir yeah definitely a, a really cool yeah. website too man i've been looking at it it's uh it's set up real nice it's set up to give you all the information that you really need uh, it gives you pricing it's giving you length the line lower rates uh, how many pieces of everything like it's um it breaks it down for you you know and like you guys said it's uh really technique specific so it kind of takes out all that guesswork so yep. uh you know it's um you know just double check uh there's two piece you know two piece rods i think they even have a couple of two piece casting rods yeah there's a few right there so check out douglas and uh, oh, I did. I did want to touch base. Who has uh, experience with the fly rods? Either one of you? I've I haven't touched them. Felt yet. them before, but I've never used them. Mm-hmm. I don't fly fish. It's actually pretty ugly when I try to fly fish. So <laughs> leave that for somebody else. Yeah. I can just go in touch with somebody who has used them though. Yeah. Yeah. I. I might have seen them once in a fly shop I was in, but I've never. I've never used one yet. Yeah, I would say uh, hit up my man JD. Yeah, I know their their be- their best seller is the Sky G. That's all I'll say because that's all I know. Nice. Very cool. All right. Well, thanks again, guys, and thank you to all the listeners for joining us on the final cast. And uh, with that, we'll sign out. See you next week. Peace. See you. 
Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle in Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at Paddle, the letter N, and Finn.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at Paddle, the letter N, and Finn at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler Button, and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures located in Northern Illinois for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. TRC Covers, protect your investment. Catch Products, shout out to Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com and put the Paddle in Fin logo directly on your catch board. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to Jigmasters Masters.com, use promo code PNF20 and save 20% on all your jig and tackle needs.